Welcome to the Workplace Ninja Netherlands podcast, a series on Microsoft's modern workplace management. So, hello, welcome back at a new Workplace Ninja podcast recording about the workplace management series. We will continue that uh, that story that we started a few months ago. Um, it has been a little bit quiet because of summer holidays, uh, events that we have attended and so on. Uh, if you don't know, the Workplace Ninja Summit was there uh, in it was September in, in Baden in Switzerland. We've uh, done a uh, lots of recordings. They are published on the uh, YouTube channel and uh, podcast channels from the uh, Workplace Ninja Summit. So if you want, you can join them and uh, look what uh, what happens there. But we're still back in the Netherlands uh, and recording a, uh, a new podcast regarding the workplace management uh, series that we've done. Joost, what topic uh, do we cover today? Yeah, everything about automation and uh, how somebody sees it, uh, how he uses it, and um, he's going to tell us about it. Yeah, but there's a reason why uh, why we have Sander uh, in this uh, in this recording. Um, the other the other people are uh, Kenneth and Eric again. So we're still with uh, the f- the five of us. Uh, Sander. Hey. The, yep. there, there is a there is a reason why you're here. What uh, what what's the reason? Well, the main reason is because I'm also a ninja, so uh, that's reason number one for me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the, also the other reason is um, uh, yeah, of course the automation part. And uh, well, um, I started with a, a little project. With what started as a little project, it's uh, uh, expanding massively uh, currently. So uh, yeah, I had re- really. I uh, had a lot of reactions uh, um, with my, all my pilots, what I, which I was, uh, uh, which I posted a few weeks ago, um, yep. almost. So, um, well, I uh, continued with uh, with that project, and uh, now uh, today I released my uh, my of the uh, the first uh, big feature in uh, in what's this uh, called the uh, uh, Intune CLI. Yeah, we will um, we will test it today uh, before mm-hmm. uh, before it will be uh, in preview. Uh, I said uh, Microsoft is uh, is doing everything in in preview, private preview. So we have the opportunity to to do the private preview, and then uh, yeah. uh, you can opt in if you listen to this. You can opt in for a preview version, and then uh, after that it will be GA, yeah, probably. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a preview now. It's on my GitHub, so you can download it. But uh, the next uh, thing uh, I was planning is uh, uh, when the tests are successful with the the, the current feature, then uh, it will also be uh, a part of the the, the global uh, re- repositories uh, like NuGet, etc. Yeah. So uh, um, uh, well, Kenneth has started tested uh, testing today this morning. Uh, there were some issues with uh, uh, ASR rules, for example, <laughs> because it's who, not who, digitally who does, Yeah, who yeah. does enable that sort of, sort of rules? <laughs> yeah, I, I was I, I was joking about uh, there is actually there is someone who is, who is using Intune, but uh, and that's the the four of us, five of us. But uh, yeah, it's, uh, uh, if you have ASR rules uh, and you're not allowed to uh, run extra files without, uh, it's, they are digitally signed. Then uh, uh, yeah, then I have to do some modification on the ASR uh, uh, configuration. But uh, when the tests are successful, then I'm planning to uh, upload the uh, um, the CLI tool to uh, the NuGet repository with uh, multiple versions in there for different OS uh, operating systems uh, versions. And uh, when it's in a NuGet repository, then it's then it's uh, uh, also allowed uh, when using uh, ASR rules. So uh, that's the next step. Yeah. So we will dive in a little bit deeper um, in in a few minutes. Uh, but before, um, Kenneth, why are we using uh, automation in an in an engine environment and can do everything within the GUI? Uh, isn't it? Yeah, you can do everything uh, in the GUI. Yeah, but uh, especially if you uh, need to manage multiple environments, then uh, some sort of automation uh, will be really helpful. Uh, and what we do see is that uh, when it comes to getting a clear overview of your current configuration, uh, automation can help there as well to get a little bit more insights 
uh, compared to what the normal consoles uh, show you. Yeah. Uh, Erik, from an MSP perspective, uh, you are managing a lot of customers. Um, what are you doing with automation? Uh, the great part uh, uh, about uh, Microsoft 365 is that uh, the backend is the same. Normally, when you, in your on-premise Active Directory, it can differ uh, a bit, but you have all uh, the same REST APIs that you can call you can call them, and then you can make. Uh, a set uh, one setting uh, for example uh, or, or, uh, you can set and you can read the settings for example you can uh, an overview of all your customers uh, for example who has uh, basic authentication enabled uh, as an example and uh, who has MFV enabled or how many users are there and what's your login of all users so you can with uh, one query you can uh, manage all your customers and you can set the configuration on all your customers uh, the same and also see uh, if there's a, uh, a change uh, happened. Uh, you can uh, you can make a, a infrastructure as code, so you can uh, back up the configuration. Uh, uh, and you know, automation is uh, the uh, most uh, important part to use uh, in June. Um, and also, there are so many tools uh, about it. And uh, the tool, uh, because yeah, you can everything you can build yourself. Uh, but there are also uh, uh, multiple tools for MSPs to uh, uh, to um, uh, make the desired configuration of your uh, Microsoft 365. You have Supervision, you have uh, Simeon Cloud, uh, all uh, tools uh, which are in use by um, currently MSPs, uh, I, I think. Yeah, There are uh, two different topics, uh, if I understand you correctly. Um, the first is deploying, um, having uh, updating and managing uh, an environment. And the second is monitoring uh, to see what has happened, what, uh, uh, what, what what kind of settings are applied in an environment. And, re and reporting uh, which user has which license uh, and then over all your tenants, because if you uh, build it for one tenant, it works on all your tenants. Yeah. That's the nice thing. Yeah. And um, what is the general approach in... Um, are we using uh, standard solutions like Simeon, uh, uh, Simeon Cloud or, or others, or are we building it by ourselves? Uh, I, I think it's a combination. Yeah. So in, in some cases, uh, uh, I know that some of us are using uh, Simeon Cloud, uh, which is a paid product, uh, of course. But yep. uh, what it does is it actually uh, uploads the configuration into Azure DevOps, uh, and then you can do reconciles, uh, so you can compare tenants uh, with each other. There are some other products doing the same as well. Uh, there's an initiative from Microsoft, the Microsoft 365 DSC, uh, the desired state configuration. So th we have choices uh, there. Uh, and uh, But on the other hand, we are using community tools as well. Uh, everyone knows the Intune Manager, uh, the, the tool which uh, can easily help you to uh, actually make an export of an existing tenant and import that into another tenant. So, uh, yeah, th there, are, there are many options and there are many community tools uh, already where actually each tool fills uh, 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 yeah, uh, a specific gap. A, a specific gap. Yeah. And if you want to know more about community tools, there is a recording that I've done uh, at the Workplace Ninja Summit with uh, Ronnie, uh, Ronnie Peterson and uh, Jurgen uh, Nielsen. Yeah. Um, highly recommended to listen to that one if you are interested in the community tools because um, Jurgen also wrote a blog about that uh, based on the, the podcast recording that we did. So highly recommended if you are interested in that uh, in, in that area. Indeed. Uh, and I, I still uh, see uh, when visiting customers when I mentioned some of those tools that people weren't aware of the fact that those are there already. And it really saves them a lot of time. So make sure, spend some time, maybe an hour to listen to the podcast. It will help you uh, enormously. Yeah. yeah. Sander, what are, you, mm -hmm. what are you using in, 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 in you are building a tool uh, like Intune CLI, mm -hmm. but um, are there others that you are using uh, to help customers? Well, we are also using uh, Simian Cloud. Um, that's for us the, the main automation tool currently. Uh, also for managing multiple customers. Um, but the reason why I started the project for the Intune CLI is because um, um, I also was at the session in, in Baden uh, about the community tools with uh, uh, Ronnie and Jurgen. And um, now, well, that's also where the podcast is about. Um, and what I uh, 
what I saw and what I heard was uh, all those tools which are mainly used are uh, do have a focus on uh, configuring uh, Intune, of course, um, but that's it. So they put a configuration in it and uh, it's almost set and forget. And the main focus is on how to manage endpoints and how do man endpoints act in my environment. So uh, with um, uh, remediation scripts and all kind of stuff. But the the most common thing, what what's is what I miss in Intune and where where is a big gap from my perspective, uh, what Microsoft has, is to manage the Intune environment itself. Um, you can imagine uh, we have a customer uh, with uh, uh, probably uh, 15,000 uh, clients. A lot of policies are happening uh, for Android, iOS, Mac OS, uh, Windows, etc. Uh, all those apps, all uh, all those remediation scripts. So the environment is, is really big, um, and there's n there's no tool that helps you to keep the environment uh, clean and healthy. Uh, and that was was my main reason to start a uh, building a CLI that can run as a daemon, uh, which you can ask to clean all apps that are not assigned anymore. And before I remove them, I uh, create a backup as well. So I can restore them uh, easily when someone has removed the wrong one, for example. So that was the main reason for me to start. And um, yeah, uh, a few weeks ago, I gave a session at the, uh, the Ninja uh, Netherlands, uh, at Wartel, about uh, just a simple uh, example. Um, uh, with the Windows OS builds, where compliance policies are running in a, an Intune environment, uh, which has also a compliance policy uh, referring to a specific Windows OS build. And what happens when you're running uh, um, uh, Windows updates, for example, the OS builds are growing and going to a high level, but mostly the compliance policies are forgotten. So they put a, uh, a Windows OS build in it, a year ago, um, all those clients are updating and updating and updating, but people are forget the uh, compliance policy all to update that as well with a new build number. And uh, well, the CLI must uh, fix that problem for me. So the CLI must run as a daemon in my environment and checks every month, every two weeks, whatever, if there is a uh, to check what's which OS build numbers I have and select the second highest and that's my new baseline. So what you have, uh, what you are creating in is sort of dynamic desired state. Um, the, the desired state is mostly fixed. Uh, uh, one is one and stays one. And now you are looking in um, uh, in, a, in a more dynamic way to Intune because endpoint endpoints are moving all the time. Uh, because of updates, because of apps, etc. And um, yeah, well, I will try to create a sort of dynamic desired state for that. Yeah, and <clears throat> there was one 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 thing that was triggering me. Um, with the Intune CLI, it's also possible to see what policies, what compliance policies, device configuration policies, what apps are not assigned to any mm -hmm. group of users uh, or whatever, whatever. And that's Correct. that's yeah. one thing that's hard. Uh, to see from the GUI, um, in, yeah. in my opinion. Is yeah, it? to add to that, uh, it, it used to be available in the uh, in the console. So uh, we actually had a column uh, saying uh, whether or not the policy was assigned. But uh, due to performance reasons, that was actually removed uh, by Microsoft uh, in the configuration profiles. Yeah. And therefore, yeah. now today, you actually need to go into the configuration profile to see whether the assignments uh, are there. And uh, it's interesting, it's uh, uh, it's turned off for the configuration profiles, but on some other places, like for example, in your app configuration policies, you do see, see it again. It but, applies uh, as well. Yeah, indeed. But um, the, the the main uh, thing is, is that there's actually not a dashboard showing you all the configuration and all the assignments which are there, yeah. which is an overview that you want to have on your environment uh, because you, you want to make sure that all the policies that you intend to set are also assigned. So th th there's uh, actually a big gap uh, there where I actually, actually see uh, much added value of the Intune CLI because 
uh, as Sun already demonstrated, uh, we can have that overview within. Uh, it's uh, it's a matter of seconds uh, to get that overview. Yeah. So that less than uh, ten seconds, we have all uh, all assignments uh, which are there now. Uh, and in, indeed, and uh, uh, for me, that will uh, really help me to to yeah to uh, at least monitor the environment whether all the settings that I intend to set on my endpoints are actually all uh, also applied. Yeah, Joost, what are your thoughts about it? Um, I see the same thing, um, especially when uh, coming to a new customer, uh, you have to investigate which policies are set, not set, which applications are being used. Um, sometimes it can take a while before you know how the, yeah, the specific workplace is configured uh, before setting our baseline policies to it. So you don't want to interfere interfere any policies into your new device. So this is going to be helpful. Um, I'm doing two projects at once at this time, so I know um, this one is going to be helpful uh, because I need it, because I have to do a new customer who I don't know. And I can check which assignments are set, which policies are being used, is it set to all devices, all users, or a specific group. And then I can exclude or include stuff uh, to get everything working. So very helpful. Yeah, um, we talked about a few features that um, will be in the first release, uh, Sander. Um, mm -hmm. Any any expectations about um, the, the 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 next ones that you will be added to uh, the, to the current one? Well, uh, there's also another feature in there. Uh, it's not um, well. It's there in in a, in a very small way, but uh, it's a start, and uh, that's an overview about uh, filters and the devices that are uh, hitting that filter. So what you can do is uh, show me all filters, and uh, based on a specific filter, you can uh, create an overview of which devices are. Uh, in that filter, so you can easily uh, create an overview about with all the filters you have, with all the devices which are in which filter. So you can also see which devices, and that's the next step for the CLI, is uh, to see which devices are not in any filter. So you can uh, create a filter for that, and um, or you just maybe it's a device which is not, uh, uh, which should be not in that environment. So. Um, that's that's the main that's the next thing I want to do, and um, I also have an option that is called uh, remove duplicates. So uh, what I heard a lot is that um, uh, Intune has a nasty uh, um, a nasty thing is that in Intune you can create uh, resources with the same name. That's uh, very horrible, but uh, it's creating a new ID, but the discipline names are same. Uh, that's for a device or so, but also for configuration policies and that kind of stuff. So what I'm doing next is to create an option that uh, searches for devices which are duplicate, and then based on the um, if it's not a if it's a physical device, then uh, it, it will search for a device name uh, including the uh, uh, serial number. And if it's if it's found as a duplicate serial number, then um, it will show you an overview with which are duplicate, and then uh, you have the option to remove the duplicates based on the last uh, sync date. Um, well, no, that's the, that's the features which I'm working on now. Um, the next things uh, I have uh, on the on my schedule is to uh, also um, um, create and export uh, configurations, and then uh, not just a simple uh, uh, configuration uh, policy, for example, but you can say um, I want to create configuration and compliance policies that hitting the zero trust philosophy. And then it, it will grab all the templates from a GitHub repository or whatever, or for a specific location, and then all uh, all imports that configuration, um, which representing that, uh, that specific template you have. Uh, yeah. So uh, I think uh, Sander still has a lot of work to do, but uh, <laughs> but what what we see now is that he's actually creating the framework of making all of this uh, possible. Yeah. And I think the options are endless. Uh, yeah. In the end, uh, uh, it's a matter of uh, having a good framework and having the uh, being able to ask the right questions uh, to all the data that uh, Sander is gathering yeah. using his tool. So, uh, and, the next, yeah. and the next big thing is um, um, Eric is working uh, for MSP. Also, I do, 
And um, so the next thing I uh, that's that's very uh, uh, one of my highest uh, priorities at the moment is creating an uh, authentication method for uh, a sign of uh, for authentication with a client and secret or client and certificate. And then you can also provide the tenant ID. So it's also be uh, a multi-tenant app. So you can uh, just log in with uh, um, just an app and with an app ID and a tenant ID and then do exactly the same uh, uh, actions. Uh, currently, it's only possible with an interactive login. Um, no. So when you hit, when you uh, start and command in the CLI, then you a screen will pop up to log in to a specific tenant. Um, yeah, well, the next big thing is then you can also run it an attendant. Yeah. Great uh, thing uh, will be uh, that you not select a tenant, but then you can say, okay, I want to select multiple tenants because our system mm-hmm. engineers not never manage one tenant day. So you want to see uh, if there are groups in any tenant uh, which I manage, which are uh, has no user assigned to it, or uh, so you can have a, a, a report overall tenants. That's missing in Intune for an MSP perspective. So that will be great extra value for the work we do. We manage not one tenant, we manage all the tenants. And then you want to get uh, yep. a, a view of all tenants. And that's tools where uh, we, uh, there are no tools missing. Uh, Lighthouse is not working, uh, so, uh, you know. Uh, so that will be great added value. Yeah. Yeah, what can I say? I'm, I'm not, I'm, currently I'm very busy with creating the correct framework. Uh, because uh, if the framework is right, then it's it very, of not very easy, but it's uh, it's make sure that new features will on board uh, are successful. And uh, I'm I will try to avoid to rewrite every time the, uh, to rewrite the framework every time. So that's the reason why I put in a few features so people can use it. And then I hope the framework will stand, and then we go further with the next uh, features from there. Yeah, so a lot will become. Um, we will mm-hmm. take take the URL to your GitHub uh, in the in the show notes or in the in the YouTube description. So please look at that uh, at the, at the Intune CLI to see if it can help you. Um, it will help helps us definitely. So uh, we will test and uh, give feedback. So uh, the next few steps uh, will be made uh, afterwards. Um, any other thing, Joost? Um, I can see he's working hard because he's his finger is. Uh, <laughs> <What's doing>? <laughs> <laughs> so he's typing like uh, like crazy. So um, yeah, 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 good work. <laughs> and we're going to test it for him as well. So uh, more eyes yeah. is more uh, able to to get those those yeah quirks off the tool and get it better and better. So um, is there the only thing maybe we can ask is is there a way to give more feedback from community as well to the GitHub page or if they want to see something into the tool, what's the best way to subscribe to you? Well, yeah, now uh, currently I do have a GitHub repository where you create, where you can create issues, um, um, which is not an issue, but also can be a feature request or so. Um, but I I do understand not everyone has a GitHub account, which you need to create issues on there. So if you um, you can hit uh, one of the ninjas, always good. Uh, and also you can hit me on on Twitter, X, sorry, uh, LinkedIn. So I think there are a lot of uh, uh, platforms to uh, reach to me. And if you buy um, him a beer, then it will be yeah, it will be good. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm a, uh, yeah. If it's not a start beer or so, then <laughs> then it's good. It will be prioritized. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll put them put them already. Okay. Any other any other business around automation? Uh, yeah, uh, um, maybe to add, uh, uh, I, I think automation is uh, can be very powerful. Yeah. But with great power comes great responsibility, and I do want to mention that. Because with automation, you can also automatically break things. Huh? So uh, the, the the point uh, I'm trying to make is that if you uh, implement automation, make sure that you have uh, uh, safety guards uh, in place to make sure that uh, you, you don't experience uh, the, the what we call uh, so-called no uh, oh no second. Huh? That yeah. is actually the second that you realize that you fucked up uh, to say so. Uh, but uh, uh, be careful with that. Eh? On the other hand, it, it can really save you a lot of time if you do it uh, correctly. Uh, 
but I, I did want to make uh, that mention. Uh, mo- most of the times, and, and app registration uh, have a lot of rights into your environment. And if you run a certain task uh, that deletes stuff, yeah, that can be. Yeah, it is powerful, but it can be harm your. Yeah, environment. so, 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 so actually, S- Sander actually gave a good mm-hmm. example eh, that if he removes something, he creates a backup first. That is, uh, I think. Uh, uh, making sure that you can always do a rollback, especially with automation, uh, is is uh, is important. Yeah. Uh, don't don't forget that. Yeah. Sander, last thing. So, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, a big thing which is missing in Intune uh, when having uh, when discussing this now is uh, actually maybe it's a, it's the idea for Microsoft to create a sort of a recycle bin, uh, just like uh, Android has of the old Azure Active Directory. Of Active Directory. So when you remove objects, it will be in the in a, a trash or so, so you can restore them from the place. But yeah. there will just be a, a thought for now. But. Yeah, there will be a feature request from us uh, to the Intune team. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks but for yeah. joining. Uh, yeah. And um, yeah, if you want to test it out, uh, see uh, to the to the correct URLs and uh, have fun with uh, the Intune CLI and give feedback to us or to Sander uh, specific. Thanks for joining us here. Um, and uh, yeah, then this morning at, at, at this time, so we will do a next one uh, this afternoon and that will be uh, published uh, in, a, in a few days or, or weeks, whatever. And then uh, you can see us back. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.